Welcome to Meet the Candidates. Uh, my name is Mark Lindy and I'll be your host and we are bringing you as many candidates in the different races for City Council, School Committee, Mayor and Councilor at Large. Today in studio I have a new face to politics in Brockton. I have Jack Lally who's a candidate for City Council in Ward 6. Jack, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Glad thank to you be for here. coming on. Um, 18 years old. Yep. Just registered to vote within a certain period of time and now you're a candidate. You get guts. Thank you. What do you? What got you into the race? What? What? What made you decide to run uh, for city council? Well, I was always very interested in politics, and I'd pay. You know, as time went on, I'd pay more and more attention to not just the national politics, but mm -hmm. state, state level, local level politics, and I was always frustrated seeing. You know, in every level where you know people sitting on their couches or people going about their daily lives they can see an error that's going to be made that's going to be made they can mm -hmm. you know there's a missed opportunity here poor financial decisions all that stuff piles up and i was just determined to see if i could fix whatever i could really cuz i want to see the city as best as it can possibly be you have on your your sign for better Brockton. Now, Car Cardinal Spellman graduate, am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was over at Cardinal Spellman about a year ago when Andy Card came, the chief of staff to then President Bush at the time. He, he after he was chief of staff, and he gave a talk to some students over there that I thought was pretty inspiring. Did Spellman, in particular? push you into civic service. I know they talk about it and all mm. the students say we cover the graduation over there and we're involved with some of the Spelman sports. Is that something that inspired you to get in? I definitely became much more interested in politics while I was at Spelman. I was actually uh, part of the group that helped you know set up the chairs and everything for that. That's what meeting. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I knew I saw your face before. You always yeah. remember a face. Um, that was an amazing program that particular day, I thought. It was, it was really good, The yeah. student said, why don't you Skype into class? And he said, I'll do one better than that. I'll come to class. Yeah, he's, uh, that, that student who contacted him, Matt McCauley, mm -hmm. was in the other, one of the AP U.S. history classes. I was in, I was in the other one. And uh, oh, okay. we came into class that day, and our teacher was ecstatic. She was like... Guess who called Matt in the middle of class? Mm -hmm. We were like his mom. Yep. No, it was much bigger than. That. So Brockton resident, family's from Brockton. Um, did, prior to Spelman, were you in the public school system? Um, well, my family was. My family. My father grew up in uh, Randolph. Okay. And my mother grew up in Hanson. Mm -hmm. And we moved here when I was two. Okay. But I went to a uh, Brookfield Mil uh, Elementary School. Yeah. And Ashfield Middle School. There you go. So th those are both Ward 6 schools. Yep. So how important would it be to you as a city councilor to make sure the school system is sound and the, the budget priorities for the schools? It's vital, mm -hmm. really, because, I mean, look at me. I'm 18 years old, and I'm running for city council. Kids can do am amazing things. You hear, you hear on the news all the time, you know, this one boy started a charity. Mm -hmm. And he's doing really well. This one girl asked all the kids at her birthday party not to bring gifts but to donate mm -hmm. to something. They, uh, people sometimes underestimate the abilities or the determination of people based, on, based just on their age. Mm -hmm. But the future of, I think this is on my palm card, the future of Brockton is in those, in those schools. Mm -hmm. and, if we, and if if we neglect their education, then we're in the long term neglecting the future of Brockton. Now you're continuing your education. Where are you going from graduating Cardinal Spelman? I'm commuting to Bridgewater State. I had my third day of classes today. Okay, and you were were you in that new student group that uh, when the president was inaugurated, you're the what is it, class of 2019? Yep. Okay, that was an inspiring event, I thought. I was invited as an elected official because I'm on the Southeastern School Committee yeah. and, uh, and also for my cable role. But I thought President Clark gave a great speech. It was a wonderful ceremony. I think Bridgewater has a bright future. Uh, let me ask, political science? Yeah. I'm not surprised, right? Makes sense. 
I did that to it. You kind of sound like me in a way. I got involved at a young age. I was involved in politics at 14. Jimmy Carter came and spoke at Brockton High School. And I liked him so much that I volunteered for his campaign a long time ago, way before you were born. Okay, so now you going out and talking to people and knocking on doors. What what are you doing now? Uh, you're 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 a full time student, but you're a candidate too. So how are you balancing the two? Well, I have uh, all my classes. I picked all my classes. I have all morning classes. Mm -hmm. So I'm out of Bridgewater State. I'm out of class by one mm -hmm. every day, which means I have plenty of time to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, do something with my day, and then I try and I worked full time over the summer, and a lot, a lot of the, uh, I, I don't know if all, but I know, I know at least most of the city council has like a full time job, mm -hmm. and then they, they also do city council, so college is less time than a full time job, mm -hmm. so I'm sure I'll be able to handle it. But uh, I try every day over the summer, and I still try and continue this every day. 5 to 8 p.m., I'm somewhere in Ward 6 knocking on doors, and weekends I try and reserve from noon to 8. Wow, it's a lot. I, I lost a lot of weight when I ran around and uh, knocked on doors and stuff this like that. I lost about 15 pounds. It was great. I, I should just do it again just to, just, just to lose weight. Um, so what are you hearing from people out there? What are their issues in Ward 6? You're seeking to replace as one of three to get from the preliminary to the general. Um, a veteran city councilor, Michelle Dubois, who's got a new job. She got elected to be the state rep, so she decided not to run for both and stay there. Um, what are you hearing from people out there about their issues, specifically in Ward 6? I'm hearing a lot, of, a lot about the roads. I spoke to a woman who, um, she's lived there since, she was the original buyer of the house. Mm -hmm. The street has not been paved since it was originally put in in 1968. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some really, really messed up, really old roads in Brockton that need repaving, especially, I feel, in Ward 6. But I know, I know that we can't just rush out. You know, that's, I'm not promising that I'm going to rush out and repave all the roads because I know very well that we're in an economic crisis and the roads, if they have to wait mm -hmm. in order to keep the city running, then they're going to have to wait. But I'm going to do my best to make sure we get as many paved as possible. Now, you're 18. Mm -hmm. What kind of activities were you involved in at Spelman or outside in the community, volunteer service or a board or a committee or anything like that? Is there anything, you know, student government or something like that? Tell me about the, 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 the Jack Lally story. Um, well, since third grade, I have, uh, I, I stopped, I quit in my uh, freshman year of high school, but I did karate at Personal Best Karate. Mm -hmm. I have my black belt, and part of the, part of, you know, the whole experience is they hate the charity. Mm -hmm. They have their own charity, Personal Best Charity, so they did Thanksgiving-oriented stuff year-round. They had, you know, the Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. Where you pick off the uh, like the tag and it says what somebody wants. Sure. Stuff like that. Um, you know, try and help out. Mm -hmm. Do things like that. Um, in high school, I participated in Model UN mm -hmm. and mock trial, and I was president in my senior year of the Model UN club at Cardinal Spelman. And we tripled the amount of conferences we attended. And our and our, uh, our our attendance, the membership, in that year. I was lucky enough to do that once, but it was at Stonehill College. We got to stay at the Park Plaza for a, a weekend or a week or whatever. It was an interesting experience, just being even away from home because I commuted to Stonehill, like you're yeah. commuting to Bridgewater. Um, so you're hearing about all these issues that are going on in the city, good and bad. Okay. Um, do you have a position on the power plant that everybody's talking about? What do you think? Ward 6 isn't next door to where they're building it. It's on the other side of the city. Yeah, we're not, we're not next door. You know, we, if, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not going to be immediately affected by the power plant. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards it in support of it. But 
at the same time, I'm not going to try and force something on another part of the city if they're opposed to it. If the people who are going to have to deal with it on a daily basis come out and they, hands down, say, we don't want this here, we don't want this in our daily lives, then I don't know how we could force it on them. Well, they haven't had the opportunity to decide. The people, it's never been put to a vote or a referendum. Right now, you've got the city councilors at the moment, all 11 of them on one side of the table saying, we don't want it. And you have the mayor on the other side of the table saying, I've already settled it. It's coming here. It's done. Um, you've probably heard about the form of government we have in Brockton where there's a, um, it's called strong council weak mayor. Okay. And there's a little friction between the two parties. Um, do you think someone in your position could help that situation and uh, get people to work together and talk to each other? Um, you know, what, what's your experience with that? Do you, do, do, you have bro do you have brothers and sisters? Okay. I have and some, two sisters. So, okay, so two sisters. Where do you fall in the, the scheme of things? Are you, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest, so you have two younger sisters, okay. Um, I guess city councilors can be like brothers and sisters in a sense, right? So do you think that you could help get elected and, and, and it seems to be a lot of arguing going on in city government. Yeah. Um, we've seen, like in Washington, when they had the government shutdown, mm -hmm. we've seen what happens and the damaging effects of when government refuses to get along. There's a point where you're standing up for your principles and you're standing up for what you believe in and what you feel is right for the city. And then across the line, there's acting almost a little childish. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to see, well, you want to see debate. You want to see competition to get what's best for the city. And I don't feel like the city council or the mayor has really been acting, have really been acting, you know, childish. But I feel like if we continue stalling this at the harm of the city, it, it's not going to, it's, not going to help. It's going to hurt this city very bad. You saw how much they sued us for, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would that would knock us out. Mm -hmm. The city would be bankrupt. Now you heard a lot of talk. I don't know when did when did you turn eighteen? I turned eighteen February sixth. So you had an opportunity to vote in the election for the casino. Yes. What do you think about the casino? What was you, did you have a position when I never ask anybody how they vote. Mm. because that's people's personal business, but when you're a candidate, you get asked what your positions are on certain things. What do you think about the casino? You're not going to even be able to go into it, even if you get elected to the city council. So what do you think? Well, I don't really have much of an interest in gambling anyway, so I mm -hmm. don't think I'd go. I don't think I'd go in it. But I, you know, I sat back and I heard both of the arguments. Like I, I you know, searched it, found found it was going on and the arguments against having a casino held water they made sense but the thing is do you have a car mhm mm i have a car yeah. i'm i just got out of high school i have a car i bought the car myself mhm mm i could go drive to a casino if i wanted to mm -hmm. if they have a casino in the surrounding area i could yeah, i could even go down to foxwoods mm -hmm. there's going to be a casino in the area no matter what we might as well be the ones making the money off of it. Mm -hmm. We just can't turn a blind eye if they put the casino in. They've made all these promises. We can't turn a blind eye to those promises. We have, we have scars of that off of uh, Armiston, Pratt, Loring, off of North Quincy. Mm -hmm. There's a development back there owned by Brophy Phillips. And it has not gone anywhere in, in years. Because they, they just sort of ignore it. They, um, I've heard from some of the neighbors that they're even dumping things back there, mm -hmm. like dirt or rocks from other projects, which is strictly against the agreement. Mm -hmm. They haven't fulfilled their promise to put up a new playground near the Ashfield School. They origin the original contract was for, uh, I believe, over 55 housing. But they outlasted, they waited out that contract and now they can put in single-family homes. Mm -hmm.
They're not, they're not doing really anything with the property, though, and that's a testament to the fact that we need, we need business and we need, you know, people coming in and revitalizing the city, but we need to keep, you know, we need to watch that. We can't just turn a blind eye and let them do whatever they want because what they want may not be the best for the city. What about Ward 6 specifically? Um, there's focus on downtown redevelopment. There's focus on Campello redevelopment. Don't hear a lot of talk about Montello, which is north side. And I really don't hear a lot of talk about the village. The village is about the worst that I've seen it in a long time. Um, the Lithuanian club got closed down because there was crime and activity there. Looks like a new new family restaurants going to open up there. When I was a kid, there were bakeries there. It was the Lithuanian village, and it was very active, and it was in much, much better shape than I do. Do you have any ideas, new ideas as a young person, what that village could be like? I want to see whether that, I want to see that village, whether it's business or residential, I want to see it alive again moving, bustling. I was down on Ames Street just yesterday mm -hmm. with a friend of mine. We were campaigning down Ames Street and it was, we, I was looking around going, there's all sorts, of, the, the T's right there. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of connections. This is, this could be, this could be a bustling center of industry, but nobody seems to be taking action on it. I called, um, I was call I was on the phone with a couple of companies earlier today. You know, I just pulled up, you know, Googled, you know, companies in Massachusetts, you mm -hmm. know, bigger companies. Mm -hmm. Just calling, see, you know, hey, are you considering expansion anytime soon? Would you consider Brockton? We've got prime location right by right by the T. Mm -hmm. Bring you straight into Boston, bring you south. It's a fantastic opportunity. So I, I want to see whether, whether it's a city and statewide, you know, cooperation, revitalization, or whether we just go out and we get businesses and we bring them in. I want to see something positive happen in the area. What kind of reaction did you get when you made those phone calls? I'm just curious. That's interesting. I got voicemail <laughs> primarily. Okay. It's, a, okay. it's a Friday. So all the, all it's the, a Friday before Labor Day. We yeah, all the, all the decision makers were... Uh, quick to leave the office, but I got, I got through to a couple of people who were a little, a little confused. You, what? I, I don't know if, I don't know if people go out and proactively do that. I just saw the sign for Friendly's, the old Friendly's at Brockton High that's now up for auction. It turned into a couple of restaurants that went yeah. out of business. I'm ready to pick up the phone and call Friendly's and say, we want you back. We used to have five Friendly's in Brockton back in the day. We had one at the mall, one at the south side they tore down, one on the north side that's an office, one on the east side, and then the one at the high. There were five of them. Now there are none. And Friendly's went bankrupt, but they've come back. I'd love to get them back. We've lost a lot of restaurants in the oh, city, yeah. in, in specific. So um, who inspired you? Did, uh, have you learned through your, your, your mom and dad, your parents, family members? Do you, have a, do you have a hero in politics, someone that's a public servant? Um, maybe it isn't politics. Maybe it's a sports person or something. Who? What's your inspiration? You know, I don't. I don't really know. I think it could be. It, my inspiration probably comes from you know multiple people. Mm -hmm. I don't have one person or one group I can point to and say they they really brought me to stand up and to run for office. But I think people in my life, like my parents, you know, like people who have sought office at a young age or people who seek office at all because not a lot of people do I mean kudos for even looking looking for the office you know what are your friends saying what do you what kind of reaction are you getting when you're out on the campaign trail as an 18 year old running for city council my friends aren't really surprised okay I think I think they saw it was coming some at least some of them saw it was coming mm -hmm. but um I've had people I've had people think I'm working for Jack Lally Mm -hmm. going around campaigning for him. Um, but I've had, overall, surprisingly, a really, really receptive, like, enthusiastic response. People, absolutely, we need more young blood in the city. Good for you. Good for getting out there. Mm -hmm. Even people who say, you know, I'm, 
I don't think I'm going to vote for you, but you, this is a great thing. Like, good, good for you. It's been, people were telling me, you know, don't feel, you know, don't get too upset if you find yourself being, you know, having a lot of people tell you, you're too young, go back to school. I haven't had much of that. I might have had five, mm -hmm. six, seven incidents where people are telling me, you know, get out of here. How many people do you think you've met? If you've been doing this quite a bit and you've been out the hours you say you've been out, yeah. how many, you, you got an account or a, a, a guesstimate anyway? I probably, if I, if I were to look, cause the, I always have somebody come out with me mm -hmm. to help, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll have a notebook, you know, mm -hmm. we'll write down all the places we're going to go and then we'll check off the houses as we go. Probably upwards of a thousand people. Probably more than that, but it's just been... How many of them do you think are going to vote? One thing about Brockton in primaries, preliminaries, it's not a big turnout. We had one year within the last three election cycles, 4%, 4% of 96, the other 96% stayed home. We had a general election where it was 30%. I think the casino election was about 30, 32. It was a special election. We have a special Senate election coming up too, not on the same day as yours, but the October one. Um, I, do you get a feeling that the people that are out there that you're talking to are going to actually show up? Most of the time. Mm -hmm. Some people say, yeah, yeah, I'll vote for you. And they just kind of go on their way. But on the palm card, on the front of it, I do have both the day for the preliminary and the day for the November election. So that's confidence. You have both dates on there. Oh, yeah. Some people only do one. Or some people don't well, put I'd, a date. Then I'd, have to, then I'd have to print all new palm cards. There you go. It's fis fiscal responsibility, one of the things I'm running on. Well, there you go. So your issues. Okay, I didn't get a chance to read the palm card here, but what, what do you want to focus on? What are your issues either specifically for Ward 6 or for the city at large? Well, I'm not going to turn away from, you know, any issue that comes in front of me. You know, if I'm not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm focused on these, something goes by. But primarily what I've been running on is public safety mm -hmm. and fiscal responsibility. The fire station uh, up in North Cary Street, Cary Hill, mm -hmm. Station 7, that's when when things start, you know, when the budget starts getting shaky, people talk about closing that, you know, it's been on the chopping block. That's not acceptable. The closing of that fire station is just not acceptable. It It's like adding another tax to the people of Ward 6. Mm -hmm. Because not only do they not have the fire station, I've heard countless stories of, oh, the fire station saved my husband's life. You know, he was... He was sick, and we had to call multiple times. The fire station, boom, trucks were there, you know, under a minute. Mm -hmm. But the insurance, the insurance of all the people in the area, that it's going to go up. The values of their houses are going to go down, and they're going to be left sitting outside waiting for a station from Ward 5, from Ward 7, mm -hmm. or from Holbrook or Abington. Mm -hmm. Get here put out their fire. It's not something, it's not something that we can afford. We talked about the two schools. One did close and then reopened. Asheville closed and reopened. Franklin School got torn down. And now it's single family housing, I believe, on the lot that's, that's coming back to life. Um, so what you're saying is, I want to protect what's in Ward 6 and make sure it stays in Ward 6. We have a really good ward. I'm very, I'm very proud of Ward 6. It's a really nice ward. It was an amazing place to grow up. What we have to do, we're not so much in a position where we have to pick ourselves up off the ground or anything. There's some of that, of course, for the whole city. But we're in a position where we have to fight for what we have. Mm -hmm. Not only to get better, but we have to fight for what we have to keep it that way. Like the solar field that they tried to put in off of North Quincy. Mm -hmm. We have to fight what we, we have to fight to prevent anyone from taking advantage. 
Now, so there. far, all I've met all three of you. You've been in the same room at the same time. I even took a picture of all three of you. It's a very civil campaign, which oh, yeah. doesn't happen as much in politics anymore. If you look at what's going on nationally, even you look at the state, everybody's getting along great. I mean, we're close to the election. We're less, you know, close to 20 days away. I'm not going to date it too much because this is going to air all the way up until the election. Um, what makes you different? What do I have for time? I'm just curious on a time cue. So, um, you know, five minutes, okay? I want to make sure I leave you two minutes at the end so you can summarize and you can talk directly to the voter. But tell us, you got two older candidates. They've lived there their entire life. You've lived here since you were two, right? So 16 years. Both of them are saying lifelong residents, 50 plus years. What's the difference between Jack Lally and Steve Foote and John Drzezinski? So, so what, 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 what do you think you have to offer that's different or better? Well, I, I can offer my youth. I've been telling, I told a woman that I'd, uh, I'd throw all my youthful energy at trying to get a street paved. Mm -hmm. I'm 18 years old. I'm looking to, I don't want to leave Brockton. I'd rather live in Brockton. I'd rather stay in Brockton, have a family. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to ensure the city's safety, security, as much as I can for not only the voters' future, but my own future, too. I have no intention of leaving the city. It's I can, what I consider my home. I've lived here for all the years that I've, you know, really been functioning, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, I have, I have a lot of pride in the city, and I don't want to see anything, anything bad happen to it. I want to get right out there. I want to see what I can fix. Are you worried about things in the city with the crime? You said public safety was a priority. Yeah, I've heard I've heard a lot of that too, from voters, from gun violence, opioids. We have a really um, a peaceful sort of ward. There's not much mm -hmm. going on, but that means that it's a prime target. That's part of defending what we have. Right. It's a prime target for people to meet up, perform a drug deal on a quiet side street. There was uh, a raid down the street from my house. Somebody was dealing drugs out of the house mm -hmm. three, four houses down from me. It's out of control, and we need to do what we can to stop it, and we need to bring in the state wherever possible. They gave me the two-minute time cue. You now get a minute, a minute and a half maybe. So talk directly to the voters and uh, even tell them how to get in touch with you. Um, oh, I'm Jack Lally. I want the best for Ward 6, for the city of Brockton, and I will do whatever I can to ensure that that happens. You can contact me at my cell phone number, 508-410-0330, at my email, Jack Lally at comcast.net or on the official campaign website which I believe is jacklally.org yeah mm -hmm. there we are and Facebook and Facebook I also have, also have a Twitter but please can at least consider me give me a call if you have any questions anything I can do to improve the ward thanks Jack pleasure to meet you and nice uh, give you kudos for running. Thank 18 you. 18 years old, there aren't too many. There's another young, young person in the race for counselor at large as well. Trevor Packard, yeah. Yep, exactly. And he'll be on TV too. So thank you for being here. Um, you're watching Meet the Candidates. My name is Mark Lindy. And stay tuned for more candidates to educate the voters in Brockton about the upcoming city preliminary election on September 22nd. Make sure you learn about the candidates, read up on them, call them, talk to them, or her. And, but make sure you go out and do your civic duty on September 22nd and vote. Thank you for joining us.